looking today at Psalm chapter 4, which is another one of David's Psalms. I'm going to read verses 3 to 5. But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Be angry and do not sin. Ponder in your own hearts, on your beds, and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. See, in this psalm, um, what David is encouraging us to do is to be angry and not to sin. And there's an important lesson here for us that it is possible to be angry and not sin. You see, often anger is considered a negative trait, something that we need to avoid. But David teaches us that that's not always the case. You see, there are things that should anger us because there's things that anger God. So we're often reminded that God is love, but for God to be loved, that means that he also has to be angry about the things that hurt the people that he loves. And if God's angry about things that hurt people, and we're meant to be like God, we should be angry about those things too. You see, we should be angry about things that cause injustice. We should be angry about racism and inequality. We should be angry about abuses. We should be angry about children being sold into human trafficking. We should be angry about the evil that we see going on in the world around us. We're not called just to be little placid, nice church-going Christians that sit around and sing Kumbaya and don't cause any fuss. We see the example of Jesus going into the temple and turning over the tables of the money exchangers who were ripping off the people who were trying to worship. It's okay to be angry about injustice, but we have to express that anger in the right way. You see, sinful anger belittles and demeans, but righteous anger frees and releases. Sinful anger tears people down, but righteous anger builds people up. Sinful anger lashes out to wound, but righteous anger restores people. So the difference between sinful anger and righteous anger is the intent behind it. Sinful anger is about the self. I've been wronged. I haven't got what I want, so I'm going to get angry. Whereas righteous anger is about others. It's about seeing other people being exploited and being angry on their behalf and trying to change the system to bring justice and equality, to bring about the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And David gives us the key to making sure that we act with righteous anger and don't sin. He reminds us to ponder first. You see, sinful anger acts first. We get offended and we lash out. We react. Whereas righteous anger we pause, we take time to think, we consider what is the most appropriate form of response. We don't act in the spur of the moment, but we act from a place of having considered and contemplated, from knowing what is right and what is wrong, from knowing what is the right thing to do. And that's how we can make sure that we don't sin in our anger, by taking time to reflect, by taking time to think about the things that are going on in the world around us, to not get caught up in the heat of the moment, but to have it worked out in our head in advance to know what things we will not tolerate, what things we will get cross about and speak out about. And we also remember above all that God is the Avenger. He will have justice. David reminds us to trust in the Lord. And when we think about all the injustices in the world that we can be righteously angry about, it can be easy to become bitter. If you spend too long ruminating on the fact that even today there's more slaves in the world than at any time in history. That can lead to bitterness. So we must remember to trust in the Lord. There will be justice for, for everyone who's being abused. But we might not see it this side of eternity. We have to trust in the Lord that there will be justice. So the application today is to be righteously angry, to Ask the Holy Spirit to put one cause or passion in your heart, one injustice in the world that you should be angry about, and to give you inspiration and ideas as to how you can express that anger in a righteous way, to free people, to release people, to build people up, and to restore people. Let's pray.